Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, and in today's video, we are going to repot an orchid. Don't be afraid though, this is not your typical orchids you see in grocery stores, or some of you guys might don't have this as beginners. However, repotting with all orchids all are very similar, and the aspects of tip the aspects of repotting and the tips and how we keep our orchids nice and healthy while we're repotting them stays the same. So before we get started in this video, don't forget to give a like and hit that subscribe button. Also make sure all notifications are on so you don't miss a video. And with that being said, let's get started. Okay, so... First of all, the most important thing when repotting an orchid is you have to actually soak the orchid extremely well. So it is very important to actually like completely submerge it in water or somewhere that's going to get all of the roots wet. Even if, even if the root orchid itself is actually inside an opaque pot and there's no ventilation holes because orchid roots get very flexible once they get wet and you don't want to snap them while we're potting so make sure you fill fill them up with water in a container in a decorative container or you can take them to a sink and just run water through the pot Okay, by the way, before we get started, I just want to apologize for if the quality is a little bad because I'm actually filming this at night. So um, I don't have enough studio lights, so this is how it's going to be. So sorry for that, but let's get started. So actually, we have a couple things we're going to need, actually two for now. We need gloves first, which I actually don't need them. I perfectly have uh, fine skin they don't get sensitive so anything and then you're going to need some scissors or shears or um, pruners or something that's going to make a clean cut on your orchids and then uh, long nose tweezers or any sort of tweezers that's going to help you pick small little pieces of medium next we're going to take this orchid out of its decorative container and as you see uh, it's already starting to fade. So a good thing to make sure, or I don't know how to say it. Let me just move this somewhere else. Okay, so a good thing to keep in mind is if your orchid is still blooming, you should probably reconsider and repot this next time. Because if you disturb the orchid, it may drop the flowers a little earlier. So if your flowers are still fresh or they just opened, then maybe just wait a little bit. But if the medium is really wet, decomposing, and even having mushrooms and fungi and mold starting to grow out, that is a really serious case and you really need to start repotting it. Okay, so now I'm going to, ooh, I kicked the tripod. So I'm going to pull out the tag, but by the way, this is Dendrobium mini snowflake. I'm going to take my hands and start squeezing out the pot. Oh, and here's a dead flower. Oh, I forgot one step. I'm so sorry, guys. So take your shears, make sure they are actually disinfected and clean because any cut wounds can bring bacteria or anything into the plant. So make sure they're nice and disinfected. I use alcohol wipes for them. You can actually flame it or use isopropyl alcohol or any sort of like he, uh, alcohol that helps like your burns and scrapes so just use that so just for prevention okay so now I'm going to uh, cut it okay now let's find the base oh and the flowers are already falling you see that they just come right off so I'm going to take my uh, shears or scissors find the find where the stem comes from which is in between these two leaves and as you see all the flowers are all just dropping off so i'm going to just make one nice clean cut 
And if you have multiple flower spikes, be sure to take some more alcohol wipes to just wipe it off. Do not wipe the handles because anything uh, that is actually very flammable and dangerous. So don't do that. Just do this uh, area that you used to cut with. And then we're going to squeeze the pot like continue what I did earlier. But be gentle because you don't want to actually squish the orchid. And then... Grab it by the base, not the top, because if you grab it by the top, you might just pull off the, the canes or anything. This goes for sympodial orchids, but with Phalaenopsis, grab it by the base under all the leaves and then gently push it. If it doesn't work, just wiggle it out of the pot. So my case, I have a lot of moss and I have not much bark actually. I don't think I have any bark. So I'm going to put my hands in there. And ta-da, my orchid is out. If your orchid is stuck in there, just gently wiggle it. Now with sympodials, it's okay if you lose a couple roots inside the pot, but with monopodials, you do wanna be more careful. And by the way, sympodials, when I'm talking about that, means, let me just put that away. It means that they have multiple stems and rhizomes and monopodials have like crowns and two leaves like Phalaenopsis and Vandas. Do check out the tutorial if you haven't. And now we have just moss and the roots. So first of all, you wanna actually loosen up the roots and kind of get rid of this pot shape. You see how it's like a square? You wanna get rid of that and just make sure the roots go around freely. I'm not asking to remove it. If you have too much moss or bark stuck in there, just try to wiggle a little bit out first. That's your first step. Mine is fairly easy to remove. So I'm gonna start removing, but just gently, gently. Just gently loosen up the roots and get rid of this shape here because you don't want to actually squish the orchid in any way. And by the way, this is sphagnum moss. If you're looking for the product of sphagnum moss I use, this is actually, I haven't repot, this is actually straight from the nursery. This is not the brand I use. And by the way, I didn't pot this up. If you're looking for the brand of sphagnum moss, I have all the products I use in the link of, in the description. I don't send links yet because I'm still learning how to edit stuff. Okay, so. We're going to slowly loosen up the roots. And if it's not working, just take a shear and poke tiny little holes in there. And I will just come back when I am finished. Oh, and by the way, before I uh, come back, another very useful thing is to use tweezers. And tweezers can help you. Just put your tweezers in there. And ta-da, they come out. And that's a dead piece of root. It's okay if you lose a little piece of root. Just make sure you don't lose too much. And this moss should be easy to grab, but in places where it's like in cracks and crevices, um, it might be actually better if you use tweezers to actually help you. Okay, so now I am back and I tried to remove as much of the moss and the medium around the roots. Now, I did have a couple of issues getting them out in between the joints of the roots and the actual plant, the pseudobulbs. So I used a little... Um, tweezer to help me i already said this but i don't have it anymore i actually just washed it and put it away but i had a tweezer that was actually a lot more sharper and it's going to help me get specifically into the little pieces of moss that i want to specifically get out so now with that being out of the way i also rinse the roots in water for a few minutes just to get it even more flexible you see this it's not going to snap as much easier. And this is the overall plant that's slightly dirty because I got a little bit of moss stuck to it. And also a few things happened. Um, 
Well, um, you see this? Some of the pseudobulbs are actually under the medium and inside the pot. So that is actually a different story. I'm just going to leave them be, but just take a look at how small these pseudobulbs are. You see that? And also as we were, as I was getting rid of some of the moss, this piece actually fell off. And take a look at how small this one is. So this one is going to be a, um, a little cutting of the Dendrobium mini snowflake and I snapped the roots off. How lovely. So let's take a look at the roots anyway since I snapped it here. The inside should be whitish, greenish. It should not be um, brown. If it's brown, it brown, it means that it's already mushy and dead. And as you see here, um, I just did something wrong. I snapped one of the roots. Even though in cases like this where you only have one root left, it's still good to hydrate that root until the orchid can actually sustain itself. And as you see here, my orchid has a, a couple very small storage devices. This orchid has a very long journey before it can even produce its first flower spike. So now that it's out, I also want to make sure to get rid of any snails. And snails might be the cutest thing ever, but they are very, very annoying and deadly to the orchid lovers and, and people who grow orchids. So what I have here is hydrogen peroxide. Make sure it's 3% because hydrogen peroxide more than, more than like, for example, 5% can actually burn the roots and damage the plant. 3% though is okay and will prevent any snails from coming. Good thing I don't see any bitten roots. So that means no sign of snails. So I'm just going to take some hydrogen peroxide and just give it a good spray. Just like that. Also make sure you cover the base area too because snails get attracted to that area. Make sure you get the bottom. All right, and now with this plant, we're good. It's absolutely okay if you hear fizzing with these plants because, uh, sorry, with, with the um, hydrogen peroxide because it just means that it's just working. So now that I've got it, it's time to pot it up. Okay, so now that we sprayed hydrogen peroxide all over the roots, I am going to pot it up now. Now this is the um, white Rapotmi clear slotted, slotted um, white pot for orchids. And as you see, it's made out of plastic. It's strong plastic, so it won't break in like the sun's rays when the temperature is really high. And as you see, it's an air cone. And the air cone is actually very important for the orchid to actually get air into the pot. And as you see, it has a lot of ventilation holes, which is very good. They also have different pots, different sizes, different colors. Go check it out. I have the um, website in the description below. So if you like one of these pots, go check them out and get one for yourself. Okay, so my choice of orchid uh, soil or potting mix that I'm going to be using is just sphagnum moss and i have the uh, products in the description below and also uh bark you really don't need any pre-made mixes though if you do like them you can definitely try them out but i personally do like um, moss and bark with no premixes or anything in there so I can just rearrange where all the water goes where the vent where the bark goes and stuff like that also it seems like I'm a little bit low on bark so I might need to go get a refill and because it's actually the end you see all of this you see all that powder in there yeah so I'm going to use something to help scoop out the bark for me now the first thing uh, let me move the little orchid to the side so first i have the orchid here and not the orchid what is going on with me today 
Okay, so I have my uh, orchid pot or the slotted pot. And I'm going to take some moss here and just make a little, add a little bit into the bottom here. Now, when I pot it up, I don't want to actually uh, compact anything. So with regular plants, you would use soil and start pressing down on it to keep it in place. With orchids, in general, you don't want to do that because their roots are adapted to air in the environment and they're epiphytes, so they live on trees. So we don't want to squish it and leave it compacted. And that's what I mean by overwatering. If you guys want more on the subject over watering feel free to let me know in the comment below and i will be sure to make it for you so i've got the moss now and i've got the bark and i'm going to just unzip it and i'm going to uh take a little scooper and just scoop out a couple pieces of bark so just scatter in there. Now the bark is going to let it have some ventilation, which is actually going to um, not only keep this area so wet, but it's also gonna let some air through too. Cause bark is actually not like a water wicking system or water wicking uh, thing item. So it's very important to have moss when you're using bark. And I'm going to place my orchid. Now, take a look at the actual orchid. Where are the growths? So I have one here. I have another one back here. And that's it. It's going. It's growing two ways. It's growing towards that way because you see the canes are actually on this side, not this side. So this side's actually the older part because you see how there's the tinier pseudobulbs compared to the larger pseudobulbs. So we know that the growth is towards this way. So when we're potting it up, make sure that the old, old, old part is actually towards the side of it. So you can actually keep the orchid in its regular pot for a longer period of time. So I'm going to keep it like this. So it has all this room to start growing out. So I'm going to take some more bark. And as you see, I'm not using that handle anymore. I think it's actually not very helpful, to be honest. And I'm going to start potting it up and alternating with bark and sphagnum moss and also tap the pot to get rid of any air pockets. And then I'm just going to get more moss. Just a little, some of this moss has a little bit of twig, so it's okay because they don't actually clean it up like super, super clean it up, so. Now, my orchid is a little bit tall and on one side is actually very short, so I'm going to, you can use like a stake to hold it in place. That's actually very helpful. I'm gonna grab some moss and get rid of all these little twigs inside. Now make it nice and fluffy and just pot it in there. Also, I have my, the moss a little bit wet already, so it's going to go in there a little better. And you can raise it up to the pot level if it's a little down there. Do not try to bury the rhizome under the medium because it will actually suffocate and rot it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and pot it up and come back when I'm done. And that is it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching th today's video. And if you guys want to see more of this informational video, you can let me know by leaving a comment right down below. Subscribe to my channel or you can click that little button right in the corner of the screen. And make sure all notifications are on so you never miss a video. And I will be sure to keep you up to date with this orchid. And with that being said, I'll see you guys all next time. Bye!